Welcome to Map Crow, the RPG art show. My name is Kyle, and today we are building better dragons. As is becoming a familiar refrain in this series, there's absolutely nothing wrong with dragons, it's just that everybody keeps messing them up. <laughs> By that I mean that, uh, especially when you're in an adventure setting, dragons should always feel... Um, frightening and otherworldly. It should be like, oh, crap, the dragon's awake, we're all doomed. There's that wonderful moment in my favorite dragon encounter from The Hobbit, where Bilbo is creeping around on Smog and they start trading poems, and Smog is trying to trick Bilbo into revealing extra information about him, like where he's staying, who he is, what his goals are, all that stuff. Suddenly, Smog launches into this operatic monologue about how great he is. And Tolkien was cribbing from some other literature to make that little poem. When it raises itself up, the gods are afraid. At the crashing, they are beside themselves. Though the sword reaches it, it does not avail, nor does the spear, the dart, or the javelin. It counts iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make it flee sling stones, for it's are turned to chaff. That little passage was from the Book of Job, chapter 41, verses 25 through 28. It's true that great artists steal, and Tolkien stole from the Bible. He also enjoyed stealing from the legend of Sigurd and Fafnir the dragon. The idea that a dragon can only be killed by piercing its soft underbelly is something that comes from a version of that legend. The dragons inspired by Germanic legends like Sigurd uh, are my favorite. They're just so extra. They're just so greedy and vile and irredeemable and mysterious. They don't really fit into a clean category or zoology. There are versions of the legend where Fafnir kills his father to take this great magical treasure and then becomes a serpent or dragon specifically to guard his treasure against anyone who would dare take it from him. Later in the story, when Sigurd slays Fafnir uh, by plunging his sword into the belly and cooking his heart, he accidentally drinks some of the dragon's blood, which gives Sigurd the ability to perceive the language of the birds. It's just like all these weird, spooky, mythical, epic stuff that's all wrapped into one dragon. The traditional wisdom of Dungeons and Dragons would have you codify dragons into specific species as if they're some kind of like animal or person. And I think that really takes something away. I think that really flattens down this like beautiful zany idea from legend. Let dragons be characters. Let dragons be tragedies. Let dragons be forces of nature. We don't need to know that, like, all green dragons are like this, and all platinum dragons are like that. It's, let each dragon be its own beautiful weirdo. So this beautiful weirdo here eats two things. This dragon eats gold, and this dragon eats corpses so it can puke up ghosts. In fact, let's just call him Dregapukish, because according to Google Translate, that means ghost puker. Now, why am I so fixated on ghost puke, you might ask? Well, my answer is because I really think that, like, breath weapons, the ability to breed fire or acid or lightning or something, is really kind of essential to the dragon brand. And here we run into our familiar refrain in this series that is something that is completely lovely and perfect is kind of spoiled from overuse and overfamiliarity. The ability to breathe fire is really cool in film, but in games it's just kind of the same as any other kind of damage. So how can we make our ghost vomit more than just something that reduces hit points in some kind of way? Well, maybe you get possessed by one of these ghosts. Maybe you start to zombify. Maybe you get, like, plagues of nightmares from past lives that, like, interrupt your sleep so you can't really get the benefits of rest. 
Maybe you are suddenly very attractive to corpse flies or are haunted by a poltergeist and like your weapons start flying all over the room. Like just be creative. Make it something other than uh, an attack that reduces hit points. But that sounds kind of powerful if he can just like zap your whole party with that. So maybe he has to vomit up like a freshly consumed corpse. Like it's kind of one corpse for one vomit blast. You could be fighting Dregapukish in some kind of tomb where he's scrambling around trying to gobble up all the gold and like spit up all the corpses at you. And, uh, you know, maybe you have to set the corpses on fire so he can't do that. Like it really sets up this uh, action piece and kind of implies an exciting thing to do besides just, you know. I attack the dragon with my sword. Is it dead yet? Oh. And let's not forget about this weird little detail from Fafnir. When you drink its blood, if you survive, you might get the ability to understand the language of the birds. Maybe if you survive the ordeal of drinking the blood from the heart of Dregapukish, you could get the ability to see ghosts or know with almost certainty how much gold someone is carrying or hear the cursed screams of the damned as they beg for mercy in the centermost rings of hell. I mean, it's your game. Have some fun for crying out loud. So as I was searching for a unique body type to give my ghost vomiter dragon, I was thinking about this time I was very little and I went to the zoo and this emu ate a Pepsi cup out of my brother's hand. Like he was crying and crying my brother, like he could not get over it. And to, like to this day, I think he's pretty frightened of emus. Uh, and uh, I just thought what an irredeemably greedy creature to kind of turn into my brother's worst nightmare and this dragon. Uh, so I kind of took a look at some emus and some cassowaries and kind of put it all together in this nightmare package just for you, Jace. And it was kind of towards the tail end of this cyberbullying campaign that I realized that emus are not necessarily scary unless you're, you're actually close to them. So this dragon actually doesn't look super threatening, but this kind of solves another problem of dragons in gaming that I have. I mean, they're so often like on the box art or in the title of the game, but you never get to be a high enough level to actually like engage with one so i think uh dragapukish could be a really great like low level dragon like he's kind of more of a nuisance like a sort of like a community fixture that's constantly like digging up graves and breaking into tombs and finally the townspeople just have enough and hire the next group of adventurers to just deal with it well, before you hire the next group of adventurers to take me out, I think we're just going to call it quits on this episode. If you are enjoying this series and have a specific monster that you would like me to yammer on about, let me know in the comments below or drop me a comment. I am on Twitter at Kyle Latino and uh, I'm thinking probably next week about doing an episode on Mind Flayers. I think there's a lot of untapped potential there. Thank you so much and farewell.